Your life experience, good or bad, is a gift when you share it with others. At Taxi Chronicles, we allow real riders with real stories to share their gift. So hopefully this episode will intrigue, enhance or inspire you. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Morning, morning, morning. Yes, we're back with another episode, another story, another pair of riders. Happy, <laughs> loving riders all the way from up north, Grinsbury, Cleve, uh, Cleefort, if you not know where that is. But anyway, <laughs> they're going to tell us why they come to London. They're full of energy for when they got in the car, um, talking many a story, which I'm sure you lot will be interested in. Uh, nice to have you here today. Thank you. Thank you for having us, Rob. Okay. So tell us first... Um, where did you meet? Through a mutual friend. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Bit of, bit, of a, bit of a weird one, yeah. Yeah, through a mutual friend. Tiana was um, involved with a friend of mine who I hadn't seen for a few years and then um, turned up at my house. They split up a few weeks later and me and Tiana had been talking as friends and that on Facebook and, yeah, carried on as friends and, and it just went from there, really, didn't it? Okay, yeah, just a bit. So why are you in London? Um, we came for the Freedom demonstration the big million, two million people marching through London yesterday. We was with them. <laughs> I was confused because I saw, I thought it was a pride parade. No. And then I saw uh, the Free Palestine. There was, there was lots of different, anti, yeah, yeah. Like yeah there was a, there was, got together. Yeah, yeah that's yeah, it, yeah, yeah. yeah. Humanity yeah. uniting, absolutely. We're all, all fighting the same common, common enemy, that's what yeah. it is. Um, <laughs> it's the yeah, yeah. yeah, there you go, yeah. man. Everybody's, there you go. Everybody's fighting the government. <laughs> yeah, it's the government, the <laughs> corruption. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Lawrence. <laughs> yeah. yeah, arrest Matt Hancock. <laughs> yeah, well, he resigned. He did, he did resign yesterday. Yeah, yeah, we were We were celebrating, weren't we? We were, at, we were outside Parliament yesterday, and I think he, he resigned about an hour later, so so I'm, I'm claiming that one. Oh, yeah. is that right? Oh. Well, I'm presuming so. It's good timing. I heard they were throwing tear gas or something. No, they were well, throwing tennis balls. Where was the, all, all the uh, demonst- uh, demonstrators was throwing tennis balls into Parliament with written notes on. It was <laughs> At Parliament and at yeah. Downing Street. And and, the, so yeah. there's hundreds of tennis balls just been launched with notes on like arrest Matt Hancock. Uh, yeah, it's yeah, yeah it's absolutely, it was hilarious. That, that's where the people have spoken there. Yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. Like that pressure. Yeah. Boris has said, I know I supported you, and we went to Eton together. But listen, there's a hundred tennis balls. <laughs> Show of EastEnders or something. Yeah, yeah. Brilliant. That's about right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, what do you two do for a living? I'm a professional dog walker and pet sitter. No, I'm an events promoter. Okay. Yeah. So that's interesting. So, tell us about your dog walking. How long you've been doing it? Uh, what so have you, you learnt about dogs <laughs> that you wish you knew when you started? How much poo? They, how much they poo? <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Major part of the job. Yeah. Major oh, part of the no. job. Restriction in in many places in London that you can only walk four dogs at a time. Yeah, yeah. I'm in. Sh- yes, yeah. That that's true. Yeah. Same for you. Yeah. Um. I'm in. Sh- I'm in show to walk six at a time, so I I can walk six at a time. Do you walk them with the leashes on? Uh, yeah. I usually hire a private field, and they can all run off the lead. Uh, secure field. Oh, yeah, so. so it's a countryside, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, maybe yeah. they'll know where me, yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah. And then how do you get them back? You chase after them? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> one says, no, I'm not coming back now. <laughs> more time. <laughs> it's like jail. No, more time. Come and get me. Yeah. Okay. Have you ever had any embarrassing situations with dogs? Um, no, not really. No, I think I'm pretty pretty good at my job and I enjoy it um, okay. yeah yeah it's, it's a brilliant job how long have you been doing it for since 2018 okay yeah and it's been paying the bills it has up until last year when um, Boris decided to shut the country down and, and 
everyone was working from home and they didn't need any professional dog walkers to walk the dogs so yeah. I lost a lot of business being a pet sitter as well I used to look after animals while they went on holiday all that went out the window so yeah it's um all these lockdowns have crippled me as well they, they will come back to you though finger yeah fingers crossed it's slowly picking up but yeah all the restrictions still don't help <laughs> what you could have done, you should have said to them, listen, I've hired a field, you can pay me a, sh a little cut to run your dog around in there. Yeah, well, I, I still do that. Yeah, I still do that. So yeah. I still have all my regulars. So You've that's... got little bits, haven't you? Yeah. Still coming in. Yeah. That's true, that's true. It's yeah. good. Have you always been a dog walker since you've left education? Uh, no, I'm, I'm nearly 35. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I've only been doing it a couple of years. Um, I went to uni as a mature student. I studied animal management and behaviour. Okay. Yeah, and so. How did you find that? Um, I, yeah, I really enjoyed it. Yeah, it's, yeah, it was an experience and a half was uni. Yeah, I enjoyed that. And did you do that with dog walking in mind? Yeah, um, well, I did it in with the intention of setting up my own business in something. And then towards the end, I realised, yeah, I'll, start a dog walking pet sitting business okay. and yeah and it went from there i would do your interesting fella <laughs> <laughs> events yeah. events management the events promotion and management yeah basically raves drum and bass events hardcore events um been running them since 2014 but um obviously the last year and a half nothing whatsoever um totally Again, yeah. so yeah to totally empty can't do anything with it with anything really um, so yeah, the last year and a half has really been just been one big, one big holiday without any money for me. <laughs> I have to say, you are looking at you. You are suited for that job. Yeah, I've been. <laughs> yeah, definitely suited. Uh, if, guys, if you saw a picture of him, <laughs> he's long hair. What's that? A stud or something through your eye? Yeah, 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 yeah. All that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. I've got <laughs> tunnels in my ears and all sorts, man. Yeah, yeah. No, I've been, I've been raving since what 1991. So I'm, I'm 46 now, like, so I've been there since since year dot. I was involved in the um, original Freedom Parades as well in London when we were fighting with the Criminal Justice Bill when they brought that in, sort of 91, 92 time. Um, so, yeah, yeah, I've got a long history in the rave scene, a yeah. massive history in the rave scene. Okay. What was that criminal justice system about? Well, the Criminal Justice Bill was back in the back in the early days when the rave scene first started off. It was a lot of free parties um, held in warehouses, in fields, um, just people getting together without without really any sort of structure as such, governmental control or anything like that. So um, Thatcher at the time was prime minister. Um, she didn't like, like like the fact that people were free thinking and um, had free will, so she brought in the Criminal Justice Bill. Why they called it that, I don't know. Um, but snuck in the back door of it was a clause that made it illegal for people to gather in groups of three or more, um, listening to repetitive beats. Um, <laughs> That was that was that that was the introduction. That really? was the, yeah, that was the introduction That's of someone who never got invited to the prom. You, you get what I mean, man. You get what I mean. You get what I mean. Twenty years. No party. No party. Twenty years. No, no, no. Exactly. Twenty years later, you've got to raise a man running through fields of wheat. Do you know what I mean? This is exactly what it was, man. And that was that was the time when they introduced, like, that's when you rave clubs started to started to come about. So that's when ministry and all of that opened. Yeah. Up to sort of combat that, but then they got control of us. You know, it was you, like your structure and everything. You can only do it at these times. You can only do it at these set venues, and everything was licensed. That's when it's and, old licensed tax yeah, stuff. yeah. That's kind of lord of that's really lord of the manor. It is no more than three people it listening is. to a repetitive you, yeah, music. Yeah, we say so go bomb bomb. Bing bing. Yeah, that's it. That's it. And if there's three of you stuck there, yeah, criminal offence, we can confiscate your equipment. We can lock you up. And then they brought in these, obviously, with the, the free parties that have been going on recently, and they're bringing in all these £10,000 fines for organisers and all that on the back of COVID. Well, back then, with the criminal justice bill and all of that, they, they snuck this in the back door with History us. History repeats itself. Yeah, ab so. absolutely, absolutely. And, I mean, it just locked us down completely for no reason whatsoever. It was an absolute joke, absolute joke. And ev everyone's been fighting it ever since. As I say, I've come back up here now for the Freedom Marches, and it's as though it, yesterday was like a massive wake-up call for me that nothing's changed since 1991. 92 we're still in the same situation so with that bill did it go 
Did it get removed? No, no, no. It's still, that's still in power. That's still in power. That's why the free part is the part is the, the unlicensed part is where you get you'll get two three hundred people turn up in a forest with a rig with a sound system, party. play their music, party all night, take their crap home with them. They're breaking the law, and you've got riot police turning up, heavy oh, handed, heavy handed, smashing the equipment up, smashing people up, issuing one thousand to ten thousand pound fines on people for having a party in a wood. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? For dancing. Literally yeah. for dancing. dancing. You know, paedophiles get less. This is this is the problem. This is the problem with the justice system in this country. It's absolutely ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Paedophiles get put onto a register and left left to walk the streets and people are getting yeah, battered with back. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's yeah, it's madness. All we want to do is dance. That's, that's all we want to do. Dance you know what I mean? Freely. What's, yeah, yeah. what's wrong with that? Live a free what's, life. What's wrong with that? How's, how how is that? Apart from all of that, how's the industry changed for you over the working in the... Um, it's, obviously, it's become more regulated, it's become more structured. In some ways, that can be a positive. In others, it's a negative. Um, it used to be sort of free will, free thinking people. Now you've got a lot of people that are... What I, what I call the pisshead crowd, basically. So you've basically got people, your general nightclubbers who are just out for a night out. You, you've got more trouble nowadays because people are all on the same level, if you get me. Um, it's a different generation, it's different times, but I think governmental controls had a major part to play in all of that and changed the whole feel of the scene. There's still parties out there that, that feel like they did back in the 90s, but the majority of them now, it's um, it's a different atmosphere. It is a different atmosphere. But it's progression as well, um, I suppose. Every time's changed, don't they? So we've got to make the best of uh, the situation that we're given, and that's what we try and do. Yesterday, hundreds if not thousands of people partying on Hyde Park. That was amazing. Amazing live bands, drum and bass, none of it, none of it permitted. But oh, well, please, please stay out of the way. Yeah, it was amazing. It was yeah, probably a bit too many of you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, not yeah that. What, harm, what harm are we doing? Power what, of the people. What harm are we doing? People have literally got on potato sacks. They've got speakers on potato sacks, wheeling them into the middle of Hyde Park, turning the tunes up, and everyone's just sat about, just dancing, just having, other, having a laugh. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Mass, mass meditations and all sorts oh, on there. It was beautiful. It was Absolutely beautiful. beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Never seen so many dreadlocks. Uh, after, <laughs> after, after you threw all the tennis balls, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 That was afterwards. Yeah. I yeah. have to say to my uh, to the audience to the listeners here that. Um, this couple are heading to Speaker's Corner, so this is like a warm-up for Yeah, me. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> In that respect, are you going back up north tonight then? We are, yeah. Yeah, we are, yeah, yeah. 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 Do you come to London often? I used to back in the day. This is the first time I've been up here in about uh, down here, sorry, in about twenty years. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. But um, I think we're coming back next month again. Now, well, I, I came to the Freedom March in in March, just gone, and yeah, I really enjoyed it. But there was um, there weren't as many people back in March, but this yeah. time there must have been a, at least a million people marching they didn't through put London. It on the TV, did they? No, no, no. no, no, no that's no, what no, I mean. No, no. When you know Me, yeah, wrong. when the media well, are well, hiding the yeah. fact that millions of people are walking. Walking through London for yeah. freedom and democracy. We, we yeah, were that's, walking. We that's were, where you know something's up. Yeah, yeah we yeah. were walking with millions yesterday, and at the same time, it was put onto the independent headlines where that the, the police had broken up the, demonst- the demonstration. Shut down in the demonstration. We were walking we with were a million people. We were still walking with a million people. I can vouch because um, not that I'm necessarily against the protest. But it's, it's very inconvenient for me. I, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I can understand that. Oh, I can understand very that. Inconvenient, man. Yeah, uh, I can imagine. And I was confused. What's going on? I did feel yeah. sorry for all the drivers on we the road. In all fairness, <laughs> we were sabotaged as well at some points because particular roads were closed off. But then you had other groups of people letting off flares and things like that, which was disorientating people. The crowd got split up into three different directions, and we ended up some of the Just crowd ended up Mar- going, in the Hyde Park. Didn't yeah, we? we ended well. We ended up going down streets with live traffic on where the roads weren't closed, and obviously <laughs> that's that's disruption caused by caused by um, yeah, sa- saboteurs, basically. Yeah, yeah. Do you reckon that was like like uh, when the BLM marches in America when there's police. Who dressed up as civilian? Yeah, I think yes, there was, there was yes, definitely something yes. going on. Definitely, yeah, that's definitely, because to split a group like that up into three different groups was, yeah, yeah. It, there was definitely something going on. It was on. still yeah. good, though. Yeah, it was. It was, it was brilliant, brilliant. The feeling of unity is unbelievable. It's been an interesting conversation with you two. Lovely, thank you. Um, thank you. <laughs> where can people find you for your dog walking? Um, uh, my dog walking company is called A Tail or Two. Um, I'm, I'm on Facebook, yeah. So it's A and then tail, T A I L 
and then R2, a tail R2. <laughs> oh, is it R2 as in O R? No, yeah, 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 that's yeah, correct, yeah, yeah. Okay, a tail R2. You've got to spell it when you do this promotion, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like <laughs> yeah. People will want your services and they can't get you. <laughs> yeah, and I, I'm, I'm based um, near Barton-upon-Humber okay. in North Lincolnshire. Okay. And if anybody wants to do an illegal rave, <laughs> in that legal, legal, legal <laughs> rave, find illegal, find illegal. Whoa, 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 whoa. Nah, man. <laughs> Where can they find you? Again, Facebook on, under the logo HVR, silver logo, green background. Can't miss it. Really can't miss it. Okay. Either that or look for me, Neil Turner, on Facebook. Um, it literally says Neil Turner, me HVR on my on my page. Okay, that's great. And what's what's um, the impact you two want to have in the world? It's just a unity and love and appreciation and free free will free will free yeah will, yeah freedom sovereignty of sovereignty and human rights yeah okay. definitely that's great well thanks a lot yeah, thank very you very welcome thank and, you. and we wish you well you wish you all the we hope you like that taxi chronicles interview don't forget to share and subscribe to get the latest episode. Ever considered investing in a continent with the fastest growing economies and population on Earth? The same continent that holds 30% of the world's known natural resources. Listen to our sister podcast, Africa Investor Stories, where you hear real investors with real stories from around the world share their experience of investing in Africa. We post Monday and Thursday at 10am British Standard Time.